Hi there! It's been quite some time since I have made my last video and uh, this is because I was very busy with Leatherworks but a very special sort, sort of Leatherworks and uh, before we start with the tongue review I would just quickly explain why and maybe you understand why I have been so busy because um, I've been given a present from my parents um, to get a course with Jürgen Vollbach he is a 3D artist uh, for leather living in Cologne and uh, I'm living close to Cologne so this makes sense somehow and um, we have created sneaker boots and um, yeah, this the sole you can get from sneakerskit.eu and um, there are patterns uh, you can download for each size and we have, or Jürgen has extended um, the original pattern so that we have now a boots pattern and uh, he has taught me how to create these shoes. I have learned so much, uh, it's amazing. So. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It has taken some time because um, maybe I'm not the fastest one, but um, yeah, these shoes are larger than the smaller and it takes a time. It's time. And so I think it's worth it spending time on something. And uh, yeah, this is the result of our first pair. And since it was so much fun, I thought I can do uh, even the other patterns, because the base of this pattern was um, a sneaker of normal size and um, there are several options, so the high size and the smaller, the lower size. And this is the pattern for um, the high size and the um, original pattern was here with a small bump, I flattened it and uh, added this foam piece and um, the idea here for this filling this is from Jürgen he has made also the machine stitching for the sides and for the tongue um, rest is done by me uh, it was just great and um, when I drive there to get a, a shoe stitched I don't come with only one pair uh, yeah, so I have also um, made this, these ones. Uh, again, Jürgen has created the machine stitching here on the sides and on the tongue yeah, because he has um, an excellent machine for this so that he can go straightly to the edge and do the stitching. Yeah, just have a look. That's really cool. And um, yeah, this is a uh, cow fur, soft indeed. And uh, these shoes are really a pleasure to wear, so it's cool. Okay, enough. Uh, just one piece that I have just recently done, because you see there is some kind of um, learning curve here. Um, leather works. If I don't uh, practice archery, I'm doing leather works. Okay, but now let's start with the review. All right, so um, Eagle Bogenbau. Uh, is a boyer from Germany. Eagle is a um, hedgehog in English and um, he has created uh, a new pattern for him. This is um, the tongue bow and when I saw that I uh, instantly thought I would like to have a bow, tongue bow from him because uh, maybe you remember I have created a tongue quiver and uh, it's this piece here. It was beginning of the year to mid of this year. <laughs> Took me quite some time. And um, for this quiver, I had um, the Ali bow tongue bows, so the tongue chang an and the tongue dun huang. But uh, now I have a tongue bow that is size wise in between, but it's the strongest one. Okay, some details about this bow. Um, it has a length from knock to knock of 59.25 inches. So it's, it's a long bow, yeah, relatively to the other horse bows or Asiatic bows. Um, strung, it has a length of uh, 53.5. Um, the weight is 450 gram and the arrow pass has a width of 22 millimeters. Um, to other measurements, I come into a bit. Um, regarding 
the optics. You can see it's a laminated bow. Um, the woods inside, oof, this is paduk, there is bamboo here in um, the core for the limbs. We have here paduk again. Um, this is Indish apple wood. Uh, we have here resin arrow pass protections and they have uh, some kind of a golden shimmer. I don't know if you can see that. Um, here the apple wood has a very beautiful um, color shading here. And this is the tips are reinforced with micata. So you see size wise, yeah, so approximately like a finger. A bit stabilized here, a bit more with a small bump. And uh, the Zia section is um, of that size that you can grab there. Yeah, so don't need to grab here. Um, the bending length is approximately from here to there. So you see that's not much. Um, the Zia length, I measure here until the knocking point, uh, are in total 27.5. The handle section is quite large as well. So even if you just count from here to there, it's more than five inches. Indeed, the bending length of this bow is not much. Um, originally, um, this handle was not covered with leather, but since I wear rings, um, I want to protect the wood, and so I have wrapped it around. It's only wrapped, there's nothing glued on it, I can remove it completely. Okay, let's string this beauty. Have you seen this? Beautiful dragon. <laughs> That's cool. Fitting, of course, to my my quiver. Um, normal step through method, no problem. I didn't say something about the strength of the bow. Nominal, it's thirty-seven at twenty-eight inches. So this is the bow strung. Hope you can see the shape completely. So very beautiful. The center serving is quite long, could be shorter, maybe like here. But uh, if you turn the uh, string by mistake the other way around, it doesn't make a difference. Um, I set myself a knocking point here already because it's the marker for me to have this for the upper side. Okay, we have now a very cold weather here, indeed. Uh, humidity is good, 59%, but temperature is more or less 5, cel five degrees Celsius. Feels colder, feels around 1 degree. So in the, in the living room, um, I measured 37 pounds, and since it's colder, Let's see how it's reacting. Um, markers, so this is 28, so the blue one, and this is 29.5. So this is the, whoops. <laughs> I need to do this again. Okay. So this is 28. 28 is 37.94. Do this again. Now 36.54. The truth is somewhere in between. Third one. 37. <laughs> so um, the first time. I pulled more, then got back, and that was the maximum. And if I pull to 29.5, it has 41 to 8, so a bit over 40. Why do I do this? Because if I draw a bit longer, uh, I can get up to um, 29.5 inches. And um, if I want to have the correct arrow weight, I need to get to my maximum. Um, 
My absolute maximum would be 31 inches, but I don't think that I will reach it today, especially not with arrows that are 29.5 inches long. And so um, the round 41 will be my, um, my fixing point, where I start with the measurements or with the calculation. Um, Matthias from Eagle Bogenbau tells me 9 grain per pound would be the minimum arrow weight for this bow. That would mean 40, yeah, so this is uh, 36, 360, and um, that's fine. Um, if you look up the bamboo archery table, uh, it's 15 grain per pound, because this is a large zeer. Yeah, so it's really large, and uh, it's a long bow, and so uh, it would be 50. And 15 uh, multiplied with 40 is around 600 and more. So um, I have here three arrows with me. First, there are the lightest ones. These have um, 374 or 3 grain. So these are the lightest ones and can will get close to the 9 grain per pound. I will calculate this then later. Then I have the, my, my <laughs> all-use arrows that are, as you can see, um, often shot. And um, yeah, just recently I've shot uh, one into the other just like that. Hmm. So it means I don't have six anymore, I have now five. And my archery club colleagues tell me uh, that I should not detach the second from the first. Naja, let's see. And these are the ones in between. And I have here heavy arrows that would probably be even a bit more than 15 grain per pound. Um, these have uh, a weight of 661 grain and these have 32 inches length, whereas the other two have 29.5. So indeed I could check if I can extend a bit further, but since it's so cold I don't think so. Um, okay, my muscles freeze already. So. These are the arrows. Uh, I have something not yet mentioned for the bow. Um, the brace height from here to there is seven inches around. And um, what else? Uh, the string is darkron. And um, yeah, if you do like this, you have one, two, three, four, yeah, so um, this is not much vibration if you just get there. I've just had recently my handwind in hand. I did the same, it was the same vibration. So this is um, just in the same range like a mariner handwind. Yeah, and uh, what else? Bending length, it's probably less than 27 inches. What else? Hmm. Ah, there is something I just want to show to you. These arrows are presents from Martin Hanusch. He has created, uh, he, he, um, he creates very nice wooden arrows. And um, so he's quite experienced on this. So these are tapered. And um, yeah, he wants to know how they fly. Um, I need to... Um, to uh, file the knocks so that they fit on the string. I haven't done so far and uh, I need to do this, but uh, just have a look how nicely he has done it. And um, this band is from um, a fishing, fishing line, something like this. It's not fishing line, it's a fishing band um, for creating uh, fishing flies. So you bind them. Um, don't know the English word now for it. Yeah, so he has very nicely done it. And I, well, when I saw them, I thought they could match with my bow. And I think I was not wrong. 
<laughs> okay, good. Then only one thing. So usually um, my thumbprint is from bamboo archery and uh, this is the one I usually have and since it's very cold now he turns now and um, about two weeks ago or so I have um, contacted Ronald and asked for um, a little uh, smaller version because if it's cold outside my fingers shrink a bit and this ring came today just in time look and this one is now fitting excellently and at first I was a bit uh, I didn't probably know how to use it and I was struggling with this but uh, now since I know how to use it I don't use my leather thumb protection anymore so, now I uh, need to warm up a bit before shooting and then we do the shots. So, okay, first I show you the fitting. So here you see, very nice rounded shape. Um, the edges are a bit rounded, but there are still edges. Yeah? So they're a tiny bit edges, it's not completely round. And um, the Paduk wood is very nice. So I know Paduk already, and um, this is quite normal. Yeah, it's this open surface here. And uh, there is glass, glass layer, and this is a matte finish then here. Uh, yeah, and there's a stable core in between with carbon. So it's uh, some. <laughs> It's hard for me to twist both anyway, but uh, as you can see, I even can't do this very much. And this is fine. And you see, of course, both straight. All right. So, short distance. And um, so my arrows, I need to sort them a bit. Let's check one of the light weighted arrows like this and um, these are not my first shots um, this is the fourth shot now with this bow because i was so um, curious uh, how the performance is i uh, tested uh, last wednesday uh, it was Afternoon already, light was fading, and so uh, at dawn you can't take good pictures anymore. So the uh, draw is very smooth. And uh, a bit of vibration, but not much. It was nearly center shot. <laughs> and my bow hand dropped. So I tried to keep my bow hand upright. So sorry if it doesn't, doesn't work probably, but I'm working on it. Okay, and this is difficult sometimes. If you don't have enough space here, then knocking is easy, but to keep the arrow there, that is a challenge. Next one. Uh, yeah, this is another easy one. So now I need to focus on that I do it right and the performance of the bow. That's not easy. Okay. Very smooth draw. And yeah. And 
the ring is now perfect because the other one is far too loose. It's good if it's hot, but this one is now the perfect size for this cold weather. And temperature even dropped. We have now three and a half degree, so it's really cold. Yeah, good. <laughs> These arrows uh, tend to go to the right. Now my all-time favorites. Color matching wise as well. And so currently I'm um, just trying to get the form right and where they land is just a hint for my performance. Better? So. Still I go a bit downward then. I don't know where this is coming from. So this, these are the heaviest ones. Color wise matching very well. And straight into the center. So it seems that the bow likes heavy arrows, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> heavy arrows, definitely. I show you. I need to adjust the camera a bit. See, the light ones are going um, to the left. Of course, if I only do shooting with these arrows, I would get it to match the center, to get the center. Um, my all-time favorites are a bit high, but are in the range uh, if they should, or where they should be. And this was the first shot with the heavies. Second, third. So if I remove all others, you see that the heavy arrows are just right. They are the best. So I'm now at the oh, approximately ten and a half meter line, maybe eleven, with the heavy arrows. Yeah, this feels very good because a vibration afterwards is just a bit and it's fading quickly. So yeah, that's really good. And uh, as I said before, the draw is very smooth. So uh, maximum draw, I didn't tell you so far, is 32 inches. And so I won't max out the bow. So I'm, it's impossible for me. Yes. Very nice performer, very good. But use heavy arrows. Matthias, nine grain. This is just uh, pleasant for the archers, but um, performance wise, heavy arrows are good. So, it means if the boyer tells you nine grain per pound is minimum, yeah, it doesn't need necessarily mean that you need to uh, shoot nine grain per pound. So that means in case you are shooting nine grain per pound arrows, it's still okay, but that shouldn't be the standard arrow you use. And um, yeah, in it's case you wonder why I have chosen a very cold day, uh, the coldest the next days, um, well, if it's getting a bit better with respect to temperature, 
uh, the light will be away. <laughs> so in the week it doesn't help me. And uh, next weekend um, there is a fair uh, for archery. And so Saturday won't be possible to take a video. Sunday is usually archery club day. Ah oh, yeah, and so the weather won't be getting much better the next time. And I wanted to show you the bow. All right. So, um, the Gao Ying style is uh, very nice to shoot. And um, I've checked uh, Justin Ma videos again. So uh, he explains it very well. I'm uh, not yet there. <laughs> Uh, what uh, does he tell? He tells if you draw, just get in the shoulder a bit so that it's compressed already, then draw so that um, the back muscles are then symmetrically. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I haven't done that the previous shots. So I'll try now to do it as he tells, but be patient with me. So, okay. Getting it in. No, 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 this is. See. But I think um, the expanding draw is important in this case. Yeah, yeah. Because everything else, so collapsing release is not wanted. And uh, with respect to the styles, Manchu and Gao Ying styles um, support you in the expanding release um, because the movement is that way. Yeah, so it's if you do it like this, this is not the style. So the style is this. Um, it's a bit more tricky with Turkish style. We have just this short release there. Yeah, <laughs> and even there, expanding release is requested. No collapsing release at whatever style that I'm aware of. Okay, it's like this. <laughs> straight into the center means if you do everything right it works and why don't I do it always like this good question good question I could say well like the old Roman said uh, variatio delectat means uh, variation is pleasant um, but I think in archery uh, this is not valid Was this off. I did not do everything right. Okay. I have uh, just tried um, the other chronograph as well, but uh, somehow it didn't measure. So I had a very nice group, but there was no measuring. <laughs> I think the light is not good enough. Uh, this one has worked, so they are equally. Yeah, from my perspective, the last time uh, I have checked both, they had similar values. So I think uh, for an impression there, this is okay. Okay, um, heavy arrows, 661 grain. And now I need to um, deviate from the perfect style a bit just to get my arrow through here hundred twenty six point three hundred twenty eight point seven Hundred twenty nine point seven. So my all time favorites, the in between here. Hundred forty eight point two. Hundred forty six point eight, 
146.7. And always mind, this is my draw length. So this is approximately 28 inches. Yeah, whoever is pulling more backwards, hopefully it measures this time. Uh, no, it was off. I think it was not in the range where they measure it. Okay, shoot better. 155.9 And I get the last one. Just a moment. Arrow number three. Hundred fifty two point five. So uh, with the heavy arrows we had around if not mistaken hundred twenty five around uh, with the mid weight arrows hundred forty around and with the nine grain per pound hundred fifty. And always mind this is my short draw length. Yeah, so you will get more of it, out of it because I think you're a bit taller. Okay, this is uh, speed, uh, not a speed monster, but um, in the end, this is not the point. The yeah, point is yes. one last round. It's really cold. <clears throat> so my uh, thermometer tells me 2.4 degrees Celsius. Yes. And one last arrow for today. Yeah, that was off. <laughs> I will repeat that one. Just a moment. <laughs> so, last arrows of today, because it's really freezing cold. Thermometer tells me 2.4 degrees Celsius. So, before I get into the freezing popsicle, uh, I close. Close the center. That was off. And even this ring that was tight fitting when I was inside is now rotating. So it's really, really cold. So oh, this was my last round. First, second, third arrow. So not straight into the middle, but um, yeah, that's fine. Here's me. What do I think of my Tangbo from Eagle Bogenbau? A very, very nice shooter. Um, a bow that has a very soft and smooth draw kicks the arrows away, not with high speed, but uh, with a moderate speed. And um, the crafting is very nice. Yeah, so he has used very nice materials and um, the painting or drawings on it is very, very charming. See the dragon with the head and its tail, very nice. Um, I have scratched the bow here a bit so a bit off where the protection is. Um, that's my fault indeed. I could um, glue ray skin on it so that um, I protect the wood from further scratching. That is not exactly the intention of um, 
this protection here. But um, yeah, the area where you scratch your bow is a bit individual. And um, if you do it perfectly, you don't scratch it. <laughs> so that would be the best. But my yes. ass. I'm not a master in it, and uh, so I tend to scratch the bows. Sorry about it. Um, I'm not yet sure if I have uh, dropped my bow arm again. If I did, apologies. Um, I promise I'll improve and uh, working on my form, especially when I shoot this nice tongue bow. Uh, so, what can I say? So draw very smooth you see i get up to my personal max is 31 deg uh, 31 inches i c could do it but then uh, aiming would be just we don't do it yet uh, especially not if, if i'm not so warm and next the um, dark crown string also um, does not support a very fast flight hmm? But uh, it's good for the bow. So not all bows are made for fast flight strings. So if the boyer gives you a dark crown string, don't put a fast flight on it. <coughs> so this bow is made for dark crown strings. And um, yeah, as I said, here the center serving could be a bit shorter. So that it's more clear which one is the bottom part and which one is the other. Uh, and um, yeah, performance-wise, yeah, of course the bow is straight. Oops, uh, uh, yeah, no worries about it. Mm. It's a non-contact zier, and um, during the shooting, uh, I don't even recognize the sound. But if I do so, it's a dark sound. Yeah, and uh, I like like dark sounds on bows, so it's very good. Yeah, excellent performing and it's really fun shooting. So, as we say, a fun shooter. Um, you can't go wrong on a bow like this. <laughs> and this material, just look, yeah, Indian, in the Indish apple wood. Wow. Can you see that? I managed um, to get good, vi uh, good photos on a uh, sunny a sunny hour <laughs> we had last Wednesday it was lunchtime luckily and I was able to take a few photos we had blue sky it was just cool but now it's blue gray all right what else yeah works perform very nice it's it's handy yeah what else to say? Matthias, hast du sehr gut gemacht. Vielen Dank. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, thank you Matthias for building these very nice bows. Appreciate it a lot. And um, yeah, wish everybody a good start to the week. Um, enjoy archery. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed for our friends in Ukraine.